we have Tim Ord on. Tim, can you hear me? Yep, I sure can. How are you doing so, today? Good. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. So, Thanks for joining us. Quite a, uh, a trend reversal that's going on, at least in the market. I'm really interested to see what you have to uh, say about all of this and what your analysis is. Yeah, uh, there's a couple of things. That I think the first thing I'd cover is that char uh, chart number six I sent you. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, it's just a, it's kind of skipping over some stuff, but um, actually, I've been along here. I thought we'd find support around that uh, four four. Um, I don't know four four five area on the SPYs. I had some actually kind of a panic signals, but we actually fell through that, and we're actually getting down to the early July lows. And if you notice, I circled in blue on the volume chart uh, what. That low is test. We're testing that low right now. Mm. Day's not over, but that low is around 80 million shares, give or take. I don't know. Looks like about July 3rd or 4th, somewhere in that time frame. Right. And usually previous lows, previous highs um, are, you know, depends which way you're going. It was in this particular case, since we're going down, the previous lows are support. And it depends how you test the previous lows. And if you test them on at least 10% lighter volume, uh, that test is going to find support. But if you get pretty much equal volume or higher than the previous low, then a lot of times the market still can bounce, but normally the ultimate will break through those lows because uh, volume is kind of like ener it's energy, really. The sure. more volume you got, the more energy it is. Of course. So uh, as we're putting this update on, we're, we're, we're testing that low right now. Uh, so it, it will hold, I don't know, this is option expiration week, which normally has a bullish bias. And and this week, obviously, if not, it's been pretty much straight down all you know last the uh, well, last three days. Counting today, it'll be a third day down. Right. So, um, if volume does come in, say around seventy two million shares today or seventy three, we'll probably find we'll probably see a bounce. But once you pass a, below some previous highs, we had some previous highs um, up around that four four five area. And you pass through those highs, and now you're testing those kind of previous lows. So some sort of a worthwhile top is in. And uh, I thought at one point uh, we might go down to uh, uh, 442, which is about another 5, 6, 7% lower uh, over the next several weeks. And this chart's starting to kind of look like that because sure. even though we did get panic in it, we're not bouncing. And so what that tells me, we're going to need more panic before a bounce does occur. So, um, so, so yeah, I mean, if it, if it see, blows past this level here from, you know, July 4th or 5th, I mean, we have quite a bit more ways to go down, right, um, until we see a bounce. How are, how are you looking at that? Well, actually, depends on today. Uh, right. You know, since we're testing those previous lows, if volume comes in, say, 72 million shares, that vicinity, we're probably going to bounce first. Okay. Up to around 4,400 or 444 sure. on the SPYs. Uh, and you kind of create a, a right shoulder, probably of a head and shoulders mm -hmm. top pattern. That's what I'm thinking could be forming here. It depends, you know, what how the close goes. Looks like right now, you know, doesn't look like it's going to be much of a bounce. And the volume's kind of ticking away here. We're close to, you know, 60 million shares already. So volume to me is, at this stage, even though we got about a little over a half hour to go, um, probably the volume's going to be higher. So uh, I'll have to get out of my long position, kind of regroup and figure out, you know, my next signal. If the market does bounce, do I go short? Or uh, if it's unclear, just stay on the sidelines until it does become clear. So it's kind of... August, if you have if you're five, if you're five months up in a row, normally the six months down. Sure. So we're five months up going into uh, this month. So this month is going to be a down month. How big of a down month? I don't know. Um, but if the expiration week bounces, which doesn't appear it will be, normally the week after is down pretty big. Now since this week is not even bouncing, um, I don't know what next week could be. So we'll kind of have to wait and see, but. In a bigger scheme of things, I think uh, this is not a major high. Uh, this is a correction and an uptrend. Okay. So this is not not like the end of the world here. Right. But some sort of a 
uh, a pretty decent low uh, at much lower levels than we are right now, probably back down to uh, 442 on the SPYs, I think, where the market could go before this uh, bottom is found. And that could happen later this month or even in September. I see. Uh, so um, we'll have to kind of kind of wait and see, but uh, we're probably due for a bounce. But it's it's it'll be a bounce in a downtrend. So um, we we can go on a couple other charts and and uh, absolutely look at some uh, still fascinating stuff. And then Tim, we're about to go to break, but stay with us through it because you know anytime you come on, you have you have great information. I'm I'm interested to see what you have stored for us in the other charts. All right. All right, sounds good. Right on. Okay, folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob. We are with Tim Ord. Tim, what are we looking at here on uh, chart one? This is the equity uh, put call ratio index. Yeah, this is uh, the bottom window is uh, the five day average of the equity put call ratio readings, and so it's a five day average, not a single day. And yesterday we closed at uh, one point oh three, which is pretty high. Everybody really jumped on the puts yesterday. On the five day, if you get around uh, point eight, which we closed yesterday there, uh, this chart goes back to about mid two thousand fourteen. And I, with red lines, I, I notified those times mm. every time that ratio, uh, put call ratio, got down to a point eight or higher. And so we hit it yesterday. And so even though we're down a little bit uh, today, we're probably getting close to some sort of a low, at least a sideways consolidation. I don't think the decline's over on the S&Ps, but I think it's, it's probably due for a bounce in here to take some of this uh, put players off, off the market. You know, you get too many, in, you get, you get, you get too many people on one side of the market, you know, everybody buying puts, you usually go to the off, of, of course, direction. Yeah. Right. And so that's kind of what's going on here, especially this indicator actually has quite a bit of importance during option expiration week because uh, kind of high flyers, you know, a lot of gunslingers, I guess you might say, sure. kind of lean on, on the puts or the calls during expiration week. And, and this is one of them they're kind of leaning on right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if tomorrow will be an update. We'll have to wait and see. But um, this area is starting to look like at least a short-term bounce, at least a consolidation that may last a week or so, but not long-term. Um, let's, let's flip to chart number two. So the equity put call ratio readings are, uh, it's kind of a sentiment indicator, kind of tells you where you are. And chart number two, Marty Zwag come up with this. Um, he's, he's passed away, but he come up with a lot of type of different indicators. He was really a master trader back in his day. And the bottom window is the 10-day average of the advanced issues divided by total issues. And uh, uh, his indicator, when it got below 0.4 and rallied to 0.6, which is the bottom window, right. uh, that's what the indicator is. If it does it within 10 days, it's a sign of strength. And that's what you want to see coming off of a major low. you got to have a lot of weakness going into a bottom, and right after the bottom, you got to have a sign of strength. And... I didn't circle those time of strength in there, but there's a couple of them in there. That's what kept me bullish all the way into the top back in July. I got out in July. and uh, But anyhow, now we're back down to 0.4. Uh, yesterday's reading was, was 0.37, uh, which was the day before readings, and, and yesterday's reading was 0.4. So we're right in that vicinity that the market's pretty oversold. Right. And you, you put that with uh, the five day average of the equity put call ratio readings. You know, you, you're, you got too many people on one side of the fence here. Right. And so, uh, and you're also running into the lows of, uh, of early July. So it wouldn't be surprised if you, you get some sort of a bounce, you know, into next week. And from there, I don't, then from there, I, I think we could possibly relieve some of the, the negativity here and the market could uh, possibly resume down again. So, um, but yes, there's a couple of different indicators I'm looking at. And I do have another in I sent you chart number three. Yes. And uh, this is what I kind of uh, do. I thought we was going to, that the um, shaded tan areas are gaps, open gaps. And I thought we'd find support at that gap area. Um, the one from the, um, 
uh, mid July, I have where I have open gap where we filled it, and I, I thought we'd find that. And the reason why we had quite a bit of panic. Panics, you, know, you got the form of bottom. You have to have panic, and there's a bunch of different reasons or a def- bunch of different indicators to identify panic. And I use the ticks and trend. Usually, you get a trend reading above 1.25 and down to green below minus 200 the same day. Majority of the time, you're going into a panic of some sort, especially if you get two of them in a row. We actually got three over about a five-day period here, right. and it didn't seem to stop the market, which kind of surprised me a little bit. So, And that's the reason why I kind of was long here, because I seen panic in the ticks and trend. And going into officer expiration week, to me, it looked like the expiration week would be an up week, and I'd go for the rally and, and look to get short again. Well, I'm stuck long here. So I got to figure out if we are going to start bouncing right here or not. But um, normally, those ticks and trend readings, when you do get a, a, a bullish combination of, of that, you're, you're within a day of a, or a, these usually happen the same days of readings to as late as two days later. Well, we're past two days later on all three of them. So at the moment, they're pushing up the ten day average of the trend to bullish levels. But it, we're not there yet. We're only 1.12 on the 10-day. It needs to be up to around 1.2 or higher. So it's getting there. And it's kind of one of the reasons why I don't think this is going to be a big decline of any consequence. It's going to be a decent pullback, but it's not going to be a 10% or down or a 15% or down. It's probably you know, 6 or 7% from the highs, which is decent. But, um, um, but, but so, not you know, so in the world scenario. Pardon? I said, but not like in you know end of the world scenario with it. No, huh? it's, it's not. As a matter of fact, when you start hearing Aaron, you know, scenario of the world on the radio and stuff like that, <laughs> chances are you're looking at a major bottom. Right. So, right. 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 Because because all <laughs> most of the indicators will be pushed uh, to extreme, and and we're not there. We're kind of you know from what I'm hearing on the stuff I'm hearing, they're kind of just almost ignoring the market right now, like no big deal. Sure. But once it gets back in the news, you're, you're probably starting to see where a bottom is starting to form. Sure. So, um, but anyhow, it's, 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 it's kind of a declining market. You know, corrections in an uptrend are always kind of hard because uh, indicators get kind of fluffy. They, you know, when your when your buy indicators start failing, and uh, you know you're you're in a at least a sideways market, a down market, and if, because of these. You know, trend and tick readings over the last couple of weeks started to fail here. We're, we're no, we're not making a bottom. What that tells me, these ten and trick readings are getting a lot higher over the next probably several weeks, uh, where a bottom may come in. Say, getting one point two on the trend and an uptrend, that's where a bottom forms. You know, we may reach two, maybe two and a half, even three on the trend before the next low will form. That's probably what's coming at us. You know, see down tick readings. Instead, two or three, or maybe four hundred on the close, you may see minus five, six, seven, eight hundred on the close. So that's probably what's in front of us. So the market is going to probably blow out pretty big, and that'll be the time uh, to really look for a major low. And that's the same what happened. Um, you know, I think it was last year, um, or was it 2022? You know, the trend and ticks were just totally blowing out, and I was buying all, all that low. I was in, and I got pretty close to the low, but, uh, you know, I was a single guy out there. Sure. It t- seemed like taking the orders because <laughs> nobody else was buying. So. Right. Right. Tim, uh, we have another break, but if uh, you want to, I would love if you could stay for the next one. We can go through the rest of the charts here. Uh, really fascinating all stuff right. you're talking about. Awesome. Okay, we will do. Awesome. Folks, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to wrap up here with Tim Ord on the next segment. Really fascinating stuff if you're just tuning in. Um, but stay right there, and we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob. We are with Tim Ord. Tim, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Wonderful, wonderful. So, All right. Let's crack into, uh, we can keep going to chart three or chart four or five. Yeah, uh, go to chart four. Wonderful. Okay, yeah, right on. All right, so the bottom window is the um, 50-day average of uh, up-down volume percent for the GDX. Mm. 
And every time it's got down below minus 20, the chart goes back to 2011, or 2000, uh, 2011. Every time it got down below minus 20, the market flipped sideways. And it, and even though the market kind of went up and down, up and down, um, the sideways pattern sometimes lasted several weeks, even in a couple of cases, several months. What, what I really want to point out on here, every time it went down below minus 20, it always went back above zero at some point. Right. But over the you know, next uh, couple of months or something like that or whatever. So it never went minus 20 uh, and went back down uh, minus 20 again. It always went from minus 20, flip sideways, and ultimately went above zero. Right. So at some point, we're going to, uh, and this has happened one, two, uh, uh, seven times, uh, yeah, five, no, eight times, or you know, seven times, seven previous times, and all seven previous times, it went above, closed above zero. And when it closes above zero, that's when the uptrend starts on GDX. So at some point, an uptrend is going to start on a close above zero on GDX. You know, right now, uh, that indicator is minus seven. So it's been minus seven in that range probably for the last couple, three weeks. And, and GDX has kind of gone sideways to down uh, in that time frame. So it's actually is making lower lows, but this indicator is making much higher lows. Even though when minus twenty was hit back in mid June, uh, GDX a little bit lower, but this indicator is showing a positive divergence. It's went from minus twenty to minus seven. But to, to say the the impulse wave of GDX starts is when this indicator closes above zero. So and we know it's coming. We just don't know when. And it's set here another week or two and and uh, decay a little bit more on GDX, possibly. But once it does give above zero, usually those, those are all the shaded blue areas. Yes. Uh, sometimes it, they last just a couple of weeks. Sometimes they last several months. So I don't know how long this one will last. But, uh, you know, the, the rally is still in front of us, but it hasn't started yet until we get above zero. And we can look at a shorter-term chart, on chart number five. We have it right here. See what? I said we have it right here. Oh, okay, okay, chart number five. And this, okay, the bottom window is the, uh, actually is advanced decline uh, percent, but it's an 18-day average. And the next higher window is the up-down volume with an 18-day average. And what I'm trying to show here, um, the first, uh, boxed. Uh, I have a outlined in red back in uh, uh, May, no, February, of, March of this year. Yeah. And w what I wanted to show is both those indicators, the, the bottom two indicators, they made higher lows as GDX made lower lows. And if you go into the top, so the red area is when both indicators are below minus ten. And the blue area is when it's above minus ten. So when it's, both indicators are above minus 10, the market's in an uptrend. So anyhow, you rallied out of the May low, had a positive divergence, turned blue, went up to the highs, and and um, I can't see what date that is. It's well, the May high, or the, the April highs. Uh, indicator uh, GDX made higher highs, and both indicators made lower highs, then closed below minus 10, and yet a downtrend. And he got back in here um, early July, gave a buy, and kind of actually gave a sell here on the uh, first part of, of August. And it's, and it's still on a sell signal because both those indicators are below minus 10. Right. So both those indicators, even though he got a positive divergence, G, GDX is making lower lows, both those indicators are making higher lows. But you need to close on both these indicators above minus 10 which will signal before the 50-day average because this is only an 18-day average, and it'll probably give you a heads up that the rally is starting, but we need to close above minus 10 on both those indicators. So when will that happen? Don't know. Um, so just whenever it starts to turn up, uh, it could be another few days, could be another actually, you know, maybe a couple of weeks or so. Don't know. Right. Usually September, October is 
seasonality-wise, is bullish for gold and gold stocks. And so we're not really a long ways from that, you know, a couple of weeks or so, and we'll be there. So it could be first part of September. Don't know. But as long as those, both those indicators remain above minus 10, the uptrend should continue. So how long those two indicators will be above 10, I don't know. Uh, it could be a couple of months. could be a couple of weeks. It, it, it depends on on um, what GDX wants to do. So this is a little bit different. I've, I've kind of figured out these type of indicators, I don't know, about a couple of years ago. And I've kind of been honing in on them and working on them. And they really work well, but they, they give decent buy and sell signals. But right now, uh, the 50-day average and the 18-day uh, averages of these indicators at the moment are still on sell signals. But they're given positive divergence. So, do you see um, any? You know, China's having some issues with, you know, their economy and uh, that area of Asia is a is a massive consumer of gold worldwide. Um, even just like, you know, on a on a simple, you know, citizen basis, right? With the okay. issues that they're having their economy and kind of decreased spending that you're they're seeing over there, do you see a longer term kind of? You know, maybe price downtrend with gold because of that, or what, do you have any thoughts regarding that? Well, is that well, as far as gold, I, I think it's actually it's still going to keep going up. Okay. Um, and gold's way outperformed uh, the gold stocks. If you look at the XAU to gold ratio, you know the gold ratio has been hovering around this range for a low range for a number of years, and you know. For some reason, people are not coming back. They're coming into gold, but they're not coming back into the gold stocks. Sure. So, and gold stocks has always been cyclical. Um, they run up and they run back down. And um, I don't know how to, you know, what China's got to do with it right now, but uh, there doesn't seem to be a bit other than a, a, a trade that may last two, three, four months in the gold stocks. You know, the uptrend on, on a bigger time frame, I don't think has started yet. And I don't know when, um, where we had a big rally, you know, in 2000, all the way in 2011, gold stocks went through the roof. A lot of stocks were in the penny stocks that turned into, you know, twenty thirty dollars stocks. Right. And I think at some point that's going to happen again. And we may be in the process of building that base where that base may start. I can't say when, when that will happen, but I think it's still in front of us. Wonderful. Well, well Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. That was uh, that whole thing was great. And folks, we'll have these charts in the den. If you're not in there yet, you should get in it. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. Thank you for having me. Okay, take care now.